Hello and welcome to the episode 235 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A wedding, a single release, and the completion of Back in USSR. These are some of the highlights of today's show. Let's start the episode with the 23rd of August 1960 continuation of the Beatles' first residency in Hamburg, West Germany. The band featured Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, and the venue was the Indra Club. One year later, in 1961, there was the fifth Beatles double feature at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The band, now a quartet, had Paul McCartney on bass. After a nondescript lunchtime show, the band also appeared at night, backed by the rocking Black Cats and Carl Vincent and the Counts. On the 23rd of August 1962, John Lennon and Cynthia Powell tied the knot at the Mount Pleasant Register office in Liverpool. Beatles manager Brian Epstein served as best men, and George Harrison and Paul McCartney were in attendance, along with Cynthia's half-brother and his wife. Conspicuously absent was John's aunt Mimi, who disapproved of the wedding. It was a peculiar affair, with a loud pneumatic drill from the street, drawing all the talking and nobody able to hear anything. After the ceremony, the party ate a lunch at Reese's restaurant, offered by Epstein. Unbeknownst by Lennon, this was the same restaurant where his parents, half Lennon and Julia Stanley, had celebrated their own union in 1938. Perhaps more telling about the future of the relationship than the Reese ominous coincidence was that John spent his wedding night with the Beatles playing at the River Park Ballroom in Chester. The evening was memorable because, apparently, Lennon was so upset that the support act, the Rima 4, had decided to play some of the songs in the Beatles' setlist that he actually walked on the stage asking, how many of our f***ing numbers are you going to play? While a fist fight was avoided, the tension was palpable especially since the Remo 4 were an experienced act, and John's behavior was not professional. On this date, in 1963, She Loves You was released as the Beatles' fourth UK single. It was the song that cemented the rise of the band as bona fide stars of the fledging global rock and roll scene, with more than a million copies sold in UK alone, and 31 weeks in the charts, reaching twice the number one spot, a feat unheard of. The first time it was on the 14th of September, and the second on the 30th of November. Apparently nonplussed, in the evening the Beatles played the fifth of six consecutive engagements at the Gaumont Cinema in Bournemouth. In 1964, after a morning interview with John and Ringo in their hotel, the Beatles played in front of 18,700 screaming fans at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California. The concert, recorded by Capitol Records with the assistance of Beatles producer George Martin, was planned to be issued as a US-only record. There were also two films of the performance, one amateurish, with bad pictures and good sound, and one made by a newsreel crew, poor sound, good video quality. Before the concert, millionaire Charles O. Finley met Epstein again. Like we detailed in episode 231, he insisted for the Beatles to add a Kansas City date to the tour, for the 17th of September. Epstein gave in and gladly accepted. In 1965, the Beatles flew from Portland, Oregon to Los Angeles, California, settling at a massive house in Benedict Canyon, Hollywood, for a five-day rest. Less than 12 hours after the band's arrival, their address had been leaked to radio stations, and the LAPD had to send agents to keep hordes of fans at bay. The management also called men from a private security agency to protect the Fab Four. 
Later in the evening, the Beatles attended a party with Jane Fonda, Groucho Marx, Rock Hudson, Jim Barry, James Stewart, Dean Martin, and other Hollywood stars. One year later, in 1966, the Beatles played the Shea Stadium in New York City, New York, for the second time in little over a year. This time, though, 11,000 of the 55,600 seats remained empty. The concert still grows $292,000, about $2,342,000 in 2020 money, and the band received a bigger percentage of it than their 1965 record-setting concert, with 65% of the gross going to them about $1,516,000 in 2020 money. Immediately after the show, the band flew to Los Angeles, California, arriving in the early hours of the 24th of August. And it's that time of the episode again. Yes, www.simonmas.com support. Lots of things you can do to make more music-related content happen and grow our little community here. Visit the page, make your choice, help out and enjoy the fun. Thank you! On the 23rd of August 1967, the Beatles returned to the Chapel Recording Studios to complete Your Mother Should Know, with overdubs on take 9 of the rhythm track. While the song would be re-recorded at the EMI Studios, it was this version that ended up on the British Magical Mystery Tour WP. Brian Epstein was in attendance to the recording session. It turned out to be his last. 1968. One could say that Ringo's departure from the band momentarily put the moaning and the name calling on the back burner. Either that, or John and George were happier to work on back in USSR than they had been to work on other songs that Paul had previously proposed for the album. The fact is that between 7 pm and 3 am, the remaining Beatles completed the work on the song. The final version included a piano part played by Paul, drum overdubs played by George, bass played by Paul and George, two more lead guitar parts, lead vocals, backing vocals, hand claps, and the sound of an airplane landing at the beginning of the song, resurfacing at the end. The plain sound was taken from the Abbey Road Effect collection, namely from Volume 17, Jet and Piston Engine Airplane. The song was mixed down in mono at the end of the session, along with Rocky Raccoon, Wild Honey Pie, Mother Nature's Son, and Sexy Sadie. This leads us nicely to the end of the episode. Join me tomorrow for quite a few things happening in Los Angeles throughout the years. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.